Hello and welcome. My name is Rajesh. Welcome to Next Bank. I'm the Next Bank chapter owner of Silicon Valley. Today I have two amazing guests. Shio, he, is, he works for Persistent. He is the lead in the IoT division and he'll be talking about IoT in banking. And we have NS Sambamurthy, who is an entrepreneur. Multiple companies he has founded and he is focused on security in banking. So we, they'll be talking to us today on both those two topics. Uh, thanks uh, Rajesh for the introductions and uh, it is uh, uh, my pleasure to uh, be part of this uh, event and uh, so today uh, I'll be talking about IoT innov innovations happening happening in the banking domain basically. So uh, if, you, if you look at the paradigm here right in the last 20-25 years so the banking has gone through um, uh, you know a very detailed tra transformation in terms of you know ba digital bank 1.0 wherein very basic uh, facilities were available all the way to uh, the current generation uh, talking about uh, uh, digital bank 4.0 wherein a lot of uh, you know uh, IOT uh, related technologies are being used mobility being uh, the core uh, form of uh, interactions uh, uh, from the customers, uh, video collaboration and uh, you know virtual reality, all these uh, technologies are being uh, utilized as part of this new initiative uh, that is happening in the banking. So uh, you know, as the banking is going through uh, the uh, transformation. Uh, there are a number of challenges uh, uh, because of the ever demanding customers. Customers are requiring uh, more, uh, you know, personalized services, uh, uh, and uh, not only that, right? So uh, it's all about new products, new uh, services, new uh, competitors, uh, 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 competitors like uh, Amazon. Uh, so they are eating up uh, small uh, SME and uh, loans, you know, for the small businesses. And uh, apart from that, there is tremendous amount of uh, data information that is being uh, gathered. Uh, so uh, banks are looking at different uh, tools uh, to uh, you know derive insights uh, from this uh, uh, data to uh, uh, first is uh, be provide better customer experience uh, provide uh, you know ways for customer retention and at the same time uh, look at uh, avenues for uh, new revenues for the banks uh, so if you take a step back and uh, look at what's happening in the industry uh, with regards to uh, internet of things iot uh, so there is a lot of investment uh, that is being made uh, across the industry. So if you um, uh, look at this uh, chart, um, manufacturing is at the very top, and you see finance sector, banking uh, right in the middle. But uh, what uh, you know, the general trend is uh, in the next five uh, years or so, there will be a lot of technology spent uh, in the in the industry. And uh, that is driving uh, the IoT adoption uh, across the industries. And uh, banks uh, uh, definitely and the financial services are uh, not lacking behind. So they want to uh, adopt uh, IoT and uh, you know, provide uh, more value add services to the customers. Um, if, you, if you look at the near and long term, uh, term goals uh, you know, across the industries, uh, the near term goal is around how to uh, improve the operational efficiency. Uh, you know, uh, try to do, you know, get some savings done uh, you know, using the operational efficiency as a factor. But as, uh, uh, you know, as the adoption uh, increases, uh, you know, the, uh, the goal is around outcome-based models. So how uh, you provide uh, specific outcomes uh, targeting uh, the entire ecosystem. And that's the way uh, you know, the uh, industry is going to adapt uh, uh, specific especially when uh, you talk about the IoT adoption. And uh, finally, when you talk about IoT, uh, it's a big data problem. Uh, you know, the research indicate that uh, there are going to be 50 billion devices by 2020, connected devices. Each of these devices uh, uh, bringing in tremendous amount of uh, data. So how do you manage this data? So it is really becoming an IO, uh, it's a big data problem. So uh, you know, there are a few examples cited here, although uh, not from the banking domain, but uh, you know, uh, one flight, uh, when it lands, there is one terabyte of uh, data uh, that is captured uh, through just one flight. Just imagine uh, how many flights uh, you know operate uh, just in the U.S. Uh, on a daily basis. So this is a, a tremendous uh, you know uh, problem at hand. And uh, similarly, in the banking domain, uh, customers are using uh, mobile devices. Customers are using uh, variable devices uh, for uh, interactions. And uh, all the data, when you capture that data, and you have millions and billions of customers, uh, then it be really be 
becomes uh, a big data problem and the challenge is how you derive uh, insights uh, from this for better customer experience and services. And uh, this is just an example of the uh, sensor installation uh, in the financial services industry. Uh, so we talked about 50 billion connected devices uh, across the industries. And uh, if you look at uh, in the financial uh, uh, services sector itself, uh, right from banking all the way to commercial real estate, uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, adoption that is happening. A lot of sensors will uh, uh, get deployed uh, right from uh, beacons uh, all the way to you know connected uh, uh, connected LED lights. So there are numerous types of sensors uh, that gets uh, uh, installed uh, in, in, in these domains. And uh, obviously large banks are not uh, lacking. Uh, so they are ahead of the curve. Uh, uh, they are basically uh, uh, doing that IoT adoption, uh, but uh, today at a small scale, but uh, eventually it's going to grow. And uh, some of the key uh, areas here are uh, customer experience, uh, customer retention, uh, uh, value add services, and increased profitability. Uh, so they are already seeing, uh, you know, uh, increased uh, value uh, through the M2M IoT installations. And uh, if you if you look at uh, a digital bank today, right? So uh, you know, talk about virtual reality, or you know, automated tellers. So a customer goes in. Uh, in, inside a, a digital bank, uh, if uh, one teller is busy or all tellers are busy, uh, there is an option to uh, you know uh, uh, go and uh, talk to a virtual teller uh, to give advice. Uh, use uh, uh, mobile phone uh, for uh, uh, connection to ATMs uh, to uh, withdraw uh, money uh, from ATMs. They do a lot of interactions using uh, you know IoT enabled devices. You're talking about uh, uh, you know smart uh, smart watches, smart watches uh, customer want uh, interactive uh, information uh, you know delivered to them uh, at, at uh, you know on hand uh, in, in across all these devices and uh, balances in terms of you know alerts so uh, they get delivered to your uh, you know smart watches uh, smartphones and other devices uh, so if you uh, look at the next generation banking challenges, right, the, uh, there are uh, top six priorities and uh, uh, one of the top priorities is around uh, cust uh, you know, creating customer centric business models. As uh, customers uh, uh, are becoming more technology savvy, uh, they are demanding uh, more personalized uh, and immersive experiences uh, delivered to them. Uh, so uh, banks are gearing up uh, towards uh, you know providing uh, a more uh, customer centric uh, business model and uh, if you uh, if you look at this right so uh, you know banks when they are going through this transformation uh, today uh, they have a 360 degree view of uh, customers in terms of uh, their transaction data uh, demographic data uh, behavioral data and uh, social data, interaction data. So uh, currently, uh, banks have a 360 degree view of a, a customer's banking profile. But uh, you know there are so many other touch points in customers' lives uh, which banks are currently not capturing. So how do you do that? So in terms of uh, you know capturing uh, that data, are there what are the additional touch points uh, that you see? And uh, if you look at uh, uh, the additional touch points, IoT plays a very critical role here. Uh, you talk about your home automation. You talk about uh, you know automotive uh, connected cars. Uh, talk about uh, you know healthcare uh, 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 variable devices. So there are a lot of uh, you know iot related uh, touch points in customers life that can be uh, captured along with uh, a banking profile uh, to uh, create a more uh, personalized and immersive experience uh, so uh, you know again uh, uh, we have put together uh, this is our thought process in terms of uh, you know how can bank uh, you know approach this problem in terms of transformation uh, so uh, on the extreme right, uh, you see there is a banking profile of a customer uh, and a banks have 360 degree view of that customer. But there are so many other profiles. We talked about health profile, we talk about uh, uh, you know, automotive profile or social profile. So uh, you know, can banks bring data from different profiles uh, through uh, a, a big data architecture, uh, expose uh, that uh, through an API layer, and provide uh, value add services not only uh, to the uh, banking customers but also open this uh, through a marketplace uh, uh, to uh, partners 
who can participate uh, in this uh, through this ecosystem and deliver uh, targeted uh, personalized offers and services uh, to these customers. And uh, I, how, how, do, uh, how can bank achieve this, right? So uh, a couple of key things. Uh, uh, banks need to basically be value aggregators. Aggregate value uh, from that ecosystem and deliver that to customers. Uh, be uh, an advisor. Uh, today, uh, you know, as a customer, uh, I rely on bank, uh, uh, you know, for, uh, let's say, financial advice. But at the same time, uh, can bank capture uh, various customer touch points and uh, you know, be, uh, uh, be an advisor across uh, all the touch points? Uh, and uh, finally, a facilitator. Uh, you know, as a customer, uh, I, I would want one-stop shop for me, right? So wherein all services uh, can be delivered uh, through one channel. And uh, that's where uh, banks can uh, play a very important role in terms of, uh, you know, uh, aggregating that data uh, and creating uh, some or facilitating and advising the customers uh, uh, throughout uh, their journey. And if you uh, if you uh, you know see see this particular slide, right? Uh, if you take uh, just a banking and uh, a business uh, a case of mortgage lending. Uh, what is the uh, you know what is the uh, you know typical uh, outcome uh, that gets associated with mortgage lending uh, in the banking domain? Uh, so uh, home management, uh, you know, if you, typically you uh, you know uh, take uh, mortgage loans uh, through uh, a bank or other financial institutes. Uh, so in that case, uh, can bank uh, create a risk profile of a customer not only based on uh, credit card rating but uh, also uh, based on uh, you know other uh, specifics uh, to you know and it could be when I talk about home management it's uh, about uh, you know what uh, IOT technologies are you uh, utilizing in the home is it uh, uh, energy efficient is it uh, you know do you have home security all these aspects uh, really could uh, change the dynamics and uh, banks can have uh, very tailored uh, uh, you know offers uh, based on the customer needs so I think uh, uh, this is what uh, you know, I have. Again, a lot of uh, innovation is happening uh, in the banking domain. Uh, uh, banks, um, um, you know, as well as other industries, are going through uh, transformations. And, uh, you know, and, and the only way to do this is uh, you know, uh, be a value aggregator, uh, be a, a facilitator, and an advisor uh, throughout the journey that customer is facing. Thank you. As we heard from uh, Shiog on how the IoT is changing banking, as the customers are asking for convenience, they also want the sec they to be secure. So there have to be a fine balance between security and convenience. So now we'll talk to Samba, who has been, who's done a lot of work in the uh, in terms of banking security. So we'll have him talk about the, the human side of that security. Okay. Thank you, Rajesh. So uh, when people think about cybersecurity, Everybody thinks about hackers, but at the end of the day, security always involves humans. And there is a human factor to security because human behavior patterns, uh, your wants and needs drives your behavior, okay? Um, so if you look at uh, the problem definition, then cybersecurity, you can say, is, is really a human problem. And as you, as you can see from the Goldman Sachs quote, you know, your base emotions drive a lot of your activities, you know. Your greed, your jealousy factor, and so on. And the, the real problem from a, from a computing perspective is the, how do you control the clicking behavior of a human being, okay? So the thinking before you click is a fundamentally a difficult problem when you think about it. And, and, and studies have shown that uh, if you look at it from a timing perspective, the actions of humans are very subconscious, particularly clicking. So uh, an eye blink will take you about 400 milliseconds. Okay, that's a very small time. In the blink of an eye, a lot of things can happen. And if you think about a mouse click or a swipe or a tap, it can take you as long as 1,200 milliseconds. Okay, so and I've given a link here. You can actually go run an experiment for yourself and see how long it takes you to do do some clicking. And uh, when you think about banks and, uh, uh, and theft, automatically you think about money. And the traditional old-fashioned way 
is to do physical theft. So, so let's talk about a couple of uh, very recent cases over the last couple of years. In the case of uh, uh, the first one in Atlanta, uh, uh, one of the uh, employees who used to work for Brinks, he was a manager, he had access to a lot of cash, he stole quarters, okay, $196,000 in quarters over a period of uh, a month and a half, and that's a lot of quarters, and it, and it physically weighs a lot of, uh, you know, um, it's about 5,000 kilograms, if you will, or uh, about the uh, two and a half cars, you know, two and a half Priuses, if you want to think about it. And he actually uh, spent some time moving it physically out till he got caught. And in the case of New Jersey uh, Village, one of the managers who had access to uh, cash from parking meters, he committed, uh, you know, he decided to steal it too. A lot of quarters, he would stuff it in his pants and stuff and walk out. And this happened over a period of two years, and he stole $460,000 uh, from this uh, uh, little village, okay, or town, if you will. And again, that's a lot of quarters. Physically, it weighed quite a bit, you know. It's about, it was about 11,500 uh, uh, kilograms, if you will, right? So it took a lot of effort for him to move it out, okay? And then in terms of uh, new digital trends, digital theft, is when people talk about hacking, then uh, mouse clicks are what drives digital theft. And so the, how long it takes for you to do clicking becomes a factor. And if you look at round trip delays today, thanks to technology, end-to-end -end propagation delay, uh, particularly in this uh, particular diagram I'm showing you, it takes about 100 milliseconds round trip. That spans about uh, 9,800 uh, kilometers or more, right? So you could literally go from China to Santa Clara, bounce to Japan and come back, all within 100 milliseconds. And when you translate that in terms of a click time, which is 1,200 milliseconds, you can go back and forth about 12 times. That's a lot of time from, uh, from a computation perspective. What does it mean for you, right, from a banking perspective? This just happened about a week ago, and it's making the rounds in the internet. Bangladesh uh, Central Bank got hacked. Basically, somebody stole their uh, digital uh, identity data and their access codes, and they uh, kept uh, several billion dollars in the Federal Reserve Bank in New York uh, in the current account. They hacked into it and transferred $100 million out few mouse clicks, went to Philippines, uh, uh, Sri Lanka, and a few other places before they, uh, one of the hackers made a mistake. He made a typo in, in spelling out foundation. That's how they got caught. So one of the uh, routing banks out of uh, uh, Europe, Dutch Bank, caught the typo and ended up uh, querying the uh, uh, Bangladesh Bank, and that's how the, uh, they were alerted to this whole scheme. And it turned out uh, on investigation that more than $870 million were attempted to be transferred out, all because identity theft and uh, uh, stealing of the uh, SWIFT cores that made it possible, okay? So a click can be very dangerous for you in today's environment. And if you take this further, even in our own backyard in the U.S., uh, the uh, federal uh, prosecutors in New York, they ran a, a five-year program, you know, uh, and uh, caught a, f a huge gang of about 48 people, and, and they used inside employees, bank tellers in particular. They, they, the, the gang was about 47, 48 people strong in multiple banks, so they had access to customer data. They used that data to make uh, fake identities walk into different branches and basically steal the consumer data, you know, banks' uh, customer data. So, so this is becoming a huge, huge issue uh, for banks. How do you prevent identity theft being misused against your own customers? So the bottom line is in today's uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, 
you know, when you think about cybersecurity, it becomes a physical access control problem. It's not just um, you know, a username and password. So if you look at uh, biometrics, for example, I'm sure you've heard enough cases about Apple fingerprint uh, being uh, stolen, and you can hack it. There is a University of Michigan paper being circulated how you can easily, uh, uh, you know, fake fingerprints and you know, uh, and and uh, get into Apple iPhones. You can uh, fake, uh, you know, uh, the iris, uh, you know, scans, for example, and so. Um, so biometric security has already been broken, okay, mm -hmm. by a bunch of researchers. And if you think about keys, you use keys to get into everything, from your doors to your cars to your safe and so on. 3D printers and cameras, you know, you can make copies very quickly, scan, make copies of your keys, and uh, make a you know uh, a copy of any key that you want and get into anything, any any place you want. So uh, physical security is becoming a, a problem as well. And uh, data in use, in, in, in you're sitting in front of a computer, somebody could take a camera and take a picture of your screen. So it acts like a scanner, so you can take data off your screen. So, uh, so data in use is becoming a problem. So the bottom line is uh, most of the traditional security practices like two-factor authentication or username and password, they've all been compromised. So we need to go into newer techniques like continuous monitoring and continuous authentication techniques to address some of these newer problems. So password has traditionally been uh, one of the primary mechan mechanisms for you to get uh, access into your computer system. And that has become a huge big problem, okay? And so if you look at uh, Internet of Things in particular, if everything is connected to everything and you have computers everywhere and there's software everywhere, you're gonna have a problem. And, and so if there is a computing stack in it, there is a hack in it. And that is becoming a huge big issue. And if you look at most companies today, uh, there was a survey done uh, a few months ago, 52% of the companies, they all employ perimeter security as a strategy, meaning it's a moat and castle type of defense. And if you penetrate the perimeter defense, you're done, okay? So those traditional practices don't work anymore. So and if you look at password itself, it doesn't work anymore. And there's a lot of uh, experts running around and making a lot of recommendations. And the reason why it doesn't work is because it works against human nature. If you ask somebody that, to, as a human being, saying, keep passwords long and complex, keep changing it frequently and so on, it works against your fundamental nature. So what do people do? They use one, two, three, four, five as a password, okay? So uh, it becomes an obvious thing. And you ask them to say, hey, you know, make it more complex, you'll say, this is super password, okay? So it's, it's human nature. The hackers themselves getting smarter. So it's a cat and mouse game. And if you remember the old uh, mad comics, it is the black, black spy versus the white spy, and it keeps going, going and going, all right? So the bottom line is the old practice of using static controls no longer work effectively. And the, all of the RSA tokens and so on, they've all been hacked. So what is the answer? The answer is you gotta look at continuous monitoring and continuous authentication techniques to get around some of these uh, uh, hacker mechanics that people are using to break your system. So, to summarize, human factor is your Achilles heel for security, okay? The key question that enterprises and banks have to ask themselves is, what can I do to make the employee think before they click, before they do something stupid, intentionally or unintentionally, right? That's the key, key factor. You gotta get into their head. Right? And which means you need to monitor continuously who's getting on your network, what are they doing, how are they doing it, and uh, what are they trying to do, which means you have to compute the context constantly. Are they opening up a file, putting it into their USB drive, or are they attaching it to an email and sending it out? Are they showing that data to somebody else? Are they trying to take a picture of the screen and so on, okay? So, so the, Bottom line is, 
continuous authentication and monitoring is very, very key going forward. And, the, uh, and along with this, you got to have an audit trail, which is uh, verifiable and immutable uh, you know, uh, record, if you will, that keeps users, you know, users honest, if you will, right? And so, uh, so this, this is one of the ways for you to address user behavior patterns as you go forward. So the summary is, a, uh, you know, uh, user behavior controls and the, how you address um, uh, security is really a, a human-oriented factor. And and I've been involved in uh, in uh, research for the last five years, uh, trying to bring some of these techniques into the marketplace as a solution. And the, uh, you can see my background here. If people want to get in touch with us. We'd, be lo we'd love to interact and engage in a debate. And we are interested in uh, engaging with banks, for example, and we're working with Persistent uh, to try some proof of concept with a few banks with some other techniques, and it's going very well. Thank you, Samar. Thank you. Thanks for all coming here. And I really want to thank Persistent for sponsoring our first Next Bank event. Thank you, Persistent. And thanks, Sama. Thanks, you. I appreciate you talking about these great things here. And the audience, thank you for coming here. Great, thank you.